All right, good morning, Pete, North Las Vegas. Um, we're out here pretty early, somewhere between 26 and 28 degrees, which is a little chilly for us uh, Southern Nevada types. I got my 308 back out here. Um, the last time I had it out on the range, um, spent a little bit of time tuning up the uh, rifle speed adjustable gas block. I had to go down two sizes on the uh, the plunger to get this uh, thing to hold open on the last round using a low power NATO. Uh, but I finally got it to where uh, I want it as far as the adjustment range. Uh, I have it sitting on eight and that keeps the, uh, the bolt open on the last round. If I dial it down to six, the, the rifle still functions, but it won't always hold open on the last round. So I have this uh, adjusted uh, about right for where I want it. Um, Wilson Combat Barrel, it's their Hunter Tactical or Tactical Hunter. It's fully fluted. Uh, it's got kind of a an eyeball twist rate, which I've talked about a few times before in the uh, previous videos. It's 11.25 on the twist rate for 308, which is uh, it's kind of unusual. Um, now that I got the gas working and, and the rifle functioning pretty well reliable, I'm out here this morning just to get this scope dialed in a little bit. And uh, I'm using Frontier New Frontier Armory uh, upper and lower receivers. I'm using a uh, Wilson Combat uh, BCG, uh, Wilson Combat single stage uh, trigger. That's the three and a half, four pound version. And uh, my usual radiant charging handle. It's an aero precision uh, buffer tube spring. 3.8 ounce on the uh, buffer weight. I uh, forgot to mention on the uh, Wilson Combat Bolt Carrier Group is um, 18.5 or 6 or something like that. Anyway, it's uh, one of the heaviest uh, bolt carrier groups on, on the market. And uh, mag pull offsets. This is a Midwest Industries, um, I forgot to mention on the receivers, it's the low pattern version. So the tank thickness back here will be about 0.150. If you have a high pattern upper receiver, it's gonna be 0 0.2, 0 0.210, 0 0.220, something like that. So the high pattern uh, upper receiver, you get a little bit more uh, meat on the rail. And that's, uh, a good thing to know when you're trying to match up your, your handguard rail. Um, if I were to got the high pattern DPMS rail, this thing would have stuck up higher. But Midwest Industries makes a low version and a high version. So low version handguard rail, low version upper receiver. You can see it all lines up nice. So if you don't know what you got, you might want to research that a little bit before you go out and buy a, a handguard rail. Uh, if you're an aero precision fan, uh, their M5, that's a high pattern uh, upper receiver. So if you're not going to use an aero precision uh, M5 handguard, then you'll have to pick out one that's that's for the high pattern. All right, starting to repeat myself. Uh, here's the uh, ammunition we'll be using today. Um, I'm probably just going to get sighted in for about 50 yards. I just want to get this thing uh, on paper and just get some idea as to uh, maybe how accurate this barrel might be. I'm not the best shot, but usually if I can shoot around one MOA, I'm having a good day. So anyway, let's get this thing loaded up and uh, see what I can do. Um, Little pole Mark III, illuminated uh, TMR reticle. All right, let's get going. Okay, I'm starting off with the uh, South African surplus. It's 40 plus year old ammunition. And we'll just kind of see where it hits on, on paper close in. And then uh, we'll get out to 50 yards today. I'll probably start using the good stuff, the Federal. Um, this scope does not have a side focus or a parallax adjustment. So I'm shooting really close in just to see where it hits. So the picture is a little fuzzy this close, but. Okay, so I'm holding on to bullseye just to see where it hits. As soon as I chamber around.
All right. I think we held open. Felt like it. Yep, we're good. All right, let's get the rifle pointed uh, away from the target. Okay, so windage-wise, we're right on the money. Uh, probably could come up a little bit. But let's get her out to 50 yards, see what happens. Okay, so we're at 50 yards now, and I thought I'd just show you guys the uh, ejection pattern. Um, it's a really soft shooting 308 on the, the setting that I have the rifle speed on. Uh, it's very comfortable. And uh, here's the ejection pattern over here. It's about seven feet. So here's where all my uh, brass was landing. So this, this rifle is very comfortable to shoot. Okay, so I got the scope dialed up to 12. I forgot to mention earlier, this is the uh, 4 to 12 version, Mark III. Um, I think parallax is set for about 100, 150 yards. So at 50 yards, the target's still not quite crisp, but a lot better than it was a second ago. All right, so let's see what we can do at 50. What the hell? going to have to check my uh, scope out because that, that shifted way too much for 50 yards, but we'll go out and take a real quick look. Okay, so I mean, it's, it's grouping. So when I went up to 12 power on a scope and at 50 yards, that's where we ended up. So I'm going to have to make some adjustments on the scope. Not quite sure why we went lower. It should have come up. That kind of counterintuitive to my uh, past experience. All right, well, let's make some scope adjustments. Okay, so I came up 12 and went over to the right eight clicks. So we'll see where that ends up. Double check the uh, scope mount. Everything seems snug and tight. Not really shooting for accuracy, I just kind of trying to see where it ends up. <sighs> it's in a different place than I you know what I'm used to on my AR 15s. All right, take a quick look. Okay, so I think windage were about right. I need to come up uh, quite a bit more. And then uh, I'll do all that off camera and just show you the results when I'm done. I don't want to bore you guys to death with this. Okay, so these are my last three shots at uh, 50 yards. Um, pretty sure that was me. Probably just wasn't quite on target when I pulled the trigger. But I uh, got two of them in here, so um, 
I'm just going to go out on a limb here. I, we still got to test a little bit more different types of ammunition in different dis distances, but for 40 plus year old surplus, even at 50 yards, I think that's pretty good. So I'm thinking I'm going to go out on a limb, like I said, and say that that barrel is at least MOA. So, uh, no, uh, no complaints about the Wilson combat barrel and the, uh, 11.25 twist rate. Um, whatever that's about seems to work. Uh, I'm going to plink around a little bit more, uh, do that off camera, but, uh, this will be enough uh, recording for today. So, uh, Pete North Las Vegas over and out. Uh, one last thing, um, there were some hiccups and bumps in the road putting this rifle together. I'm probably going to do one more video where I'll talk about the rifle build from start to finish. And we'll talk about all the little things that you got to watch out for, at least that, that I discovered on this build. Okay, later. Okay, one of my infamous uh, bonus clips. Um, just to make sure that something wasn't going on with the scope or the mount, I, I put it back on four power at 50 yards for the last three rounds. And um, I ended up putting them all right around the bullseye. I was, wasn't taking my time, but I just wanted to make sure that when I first started shooting the rifle, that was at 10 yards, just to make sure I was on paper. And that was my first three shots at 50 yards. And for it to drop down that low and move that far left, it kind of like made me wonder what was going on. But anyway, like I said, uh, the last three rounds, I put the scope from 12 power back down to four power just to make sure that, you know, we were going to be shooting somewhere around the point of aim versus point of impact. And I didn't see much change. Uh, I moved off the, the bullseye a little bit because uh, at four power with my wonky eyes. Anyway, uh, I don't think there's any issues with the scope or the mount, so I don't know what was going on when we first started shooting this morning. Anyway, I thought we'd take one last look at the rifle. BCM, made out of steel. Most manufacturers are making theirs out of aluminum. New Frontier Armory receivers. All right, Pete North Las Vegas, over and out, for real this time.